Okay, hey everybody, Happy New Year, Happy 2019, hope you had a good holiday. Now, here we are back in the new year, back at it again. So, last video we just finished uh, beating King Dodongo in Dodongo's Cavern, and Darunia gifted us with the Goron's Ruby. So now we have two spiritual stones, only one more left to find as we were instructed many moons ago by Princess Zelda to track down. Um, you'll also recall that uh, at the end of the last video, Darunia instructed us to check out the top of Death Mountain um, because there's a great fairy that lives there and she may be able to help us with something. Um, so uh, we're gonna do that. Um, we're gonna do a few other things first though. Um, first things first, we actually wanna run back into Dodongo's Cavern really quickly and talk to that one business scrub so that we can replace our <laughs> our burned um, uh, uh, Deku shield. It's totally my fault. I was being careless. I should have known better. I had it equipped briefly so that I could uh, defend myself from some other business scrubs. Well, we don't have a shield to bounce his attacks back, so maybe we can just use our regular shield. That's not going to work. Okay, how about um, Deku Seeds? There we go. We can just shoot the guy. All right, I give up. You, you let me go, I'll sell you Deku. Shield is 50 rupees, so it's a little bit more pricey than it is if we were in uh, the forest, but that's okay. We've got the cash. Shield switch to the equipment subscreen. Okay, so uh, it just goes to show that it's uh, costly, <laughs> literally, to uh, be careless like we were. But anyway, we've got that uh, replaced. Now, I'm not actually not going to equip it just yet because we're going to be uh, later when we do uh, uh, go up to the absolute top of the mountain. Uh, there's a lot of like fire in that area too, so we don't want to risk burning the shield that we just bought, so I'm gonna stick with the Hillian shield still just for now, and then re-equip it when it's safe to do so. So when we want to get to the top of the mountain, this is the route we're gonna take. Um, you'll recall before, um, we couldn't get to the top because there were the boulders blocking the way, but now that we have bombs, we can blast our way through. What I first want to do, though, is make a return trip to Goron City. Oh, whoa, look out, oh no! <laughs> oh no! I was hoping to avoid that. <laughs> I tried to roll out of the way, but um, he's got this really weird uh, roll pattern, so it can be difficult to predict which way he's going to go, left or right. I mean, I think it's not like randomized or anything. It is always the same, but uh, it's just the timing of it and the positioning exactly where he is. So let's stay maybe to the left this time. There he goes. Yeah, see how he's got that like kind of serpentine left and right? But anyway, now that we've got bombs here, we can blast our way through this hole on the wall here. And we should be able to find a purple rupee. I don't think we've encountered purple rupee before. Yeah, look at that. 50. 50 rupees. That's a pretty nice payday. And it completely offsets the cost of that new shield we had to purchase. So that's good too. Alright, uh, so we're going to return to Goron City and do a couple of things that we couldn't do when we didn't have bombs. Uh, first, let's, um, just out of curiosity, I'm not gonna talk to every Goron, but just, uh, see how things have changed. You are incredible destroying the Dodongos. Do you mind if I call you Big Brother? Okay. So, again, now that we've, uh, sort of saved the day for the Gorons and they're not starving to death anymore because they can get their, uh, their gourmet rocks out of the cavern. So, you'll see, yeah, now we can use bombs to blast our way through, um, those boulders. And we can enter this previously unenterable room. And blast our way through here. I'm still not sure if we can actually get anywhere here, though. But I just wanted to check out this area just to kind of show you that it's back here. Also, um, I, I forgot to mention this. I, I thought it, I took for granted that it kind of goes with that saying. But because um, I was talking about when you were picking up the bonflowers, you do that all with the action icon, right? So you press the blue action icon, the A button, to pick up the bonflower and then again to throw it. But now that we have bombs in our inventory as a C item, um, you press the C button, the corresponding C button, obviously, to bring out a bomb. Um, but then you can, um, 
whereas the action icon will also, again, function the same way to press it to either throw it or drop it at your feet. You can also press the same C button a second time to function the same way, to either throw it or set it down. Um, I forgot to mention that. Um, I probably didn't need to, but, uh, you know, just for the sake of thoroughness. So, um, we could blow up these boulders. Now, we got different colored boulders here. you notice that um, only those light brown ones have been blowing up, but these gray ones and the dark brown ones, bombs won't affect. So it's only these ones we can blow up for now. So it's kind of creating this sort of like a maze, almost. Right? There's only certain areas that we're able to actually access because bombs only affect some of the rocks. So we'll see what there is to do in here. Oh yeah, okay, there we, so we can get to the back. Ooh, another purple rupee. And what's back here? Another rupee, I think, maybe? That's okay. We were already maxed out in our wallet, but that's okay. And that's another good reason to be coming back here. A gold sculptula hidden in the crate. And then there's some bugs down there underneath the rock. We don't really need to capture bugs yet, but, um, and I think all of these other boulders here that we could blow up, I believe those are just red herrings. They just lead to, uh, dead ends, so we're not going to waste any more bombs there. Uh, so we'll come back out this way now. I'm, I'm not sure if technically... Yeah, so you see how there's this, like, rope here? And remember when we first visited Goron City, we, you, it, we showed that you were able to, uh, if you're real careful and real slow and steady with it, you can tightrope walk over here. So technically speaking, we didn't actually need bombs to enter that area. We could have used the rope here to bypass those boulders over there. But of course, once we got in there, there wouldn't have been anything to do anyway, because we would still need bombs to uh, blast our way through. But uh, anyway, um, I don't think there's anything else for us to be doing on the top level. But um, I'll go down the stairs proper, just again for the sake of thoroughness, so that I can keep track of what levels I'm on as I visit them. Um, there's still not anything that I can do in that chamber. But now that we're down here, um, let's see. Well, we didn't even have the Goron's bracelet at the time we were here, so we'll just use bomb flowers instead of wasting our own stock. We can blow up this wall, and there's just another one there. And hopefully we don't get knocked down by that giant rolling Goron again like we did last time. We'll have to be, uh wary of him, but uh, in here there's another two walls, I believe. Well, one, and then just one more. I've only got the five bombs, so I want to conserve them. If there's bomb flowers available, then why not use those? There we go. Whoa, now that is what I call a big Goron. I'm working on something really cool right now, but I think it's going to take a while. If you can wait five or six years, it should be ready, okay? <laughs> uh, okay, sure. I've got five or six years time to wait, why not? Uh, I'm, I can't remember if it says anywhere actually in the game, maybe from like a gossip stone or something really kind of obscure like that, but I believe this guy is referred to as Metagoron. Not to spoil it, but, um, well, here I go anyway. Uh, later in the game, we're going to encounter a Goron that's even bigger, and he's known as Biggeron. Big Goron, get it? Alright, so this guy here, part of the trick here, is to use a bomb to see if we can stop him from rolling around. There we go, so you gotta time it, position it just right so that it explodes as we go to it. So we'll talk to him. Why did you stop me? Don't stop me here. You can't stop my wild rolling. This wild rolling is the only way to relieve my stress. Now stand in awe of my wild, wild rolling. <laughs> so kind of like with the Heart Pounding Grave Digging Tour, this is also kind of a randomized thing. We have to kind of just keep doing it until the game decides 
to finally reward us, and it could take any number of tries. I've had it happen where I get the the reward for doing this like immediately. I've also had it where I've had to keep bombing him over and over and over again before he finally gives us the reward. So basically he just keeps repeating the same thing until finally the randomizer in the game decides you've done it enough times. So we'll just keep bombing him, just keep stopping him. Hopefully I don't completely run out of bombs, like I ran out of rupees in the graveyard. Ah! Here we go, alright, I'll give you this in praise of your courage. Alright, you got a big bomb bag, now you can carry more bombs, up to a maximum of 30. Of course, he just keeps on rolling anyway. <laughs> but uh, you just keep doing your thing, man, whatever, don't let me stop you. Um, but, uh, so that's nice, uh, if we check out our inventory here, there we go, now we've got the bomb bag, it doesn't actually say big bomb bag, it just says how many it holds, so that's one little nitpick about it that I wish they had specified that it is in fact, that it has been upgraded, you just have to know that, you know, you used to be able to carry less, dang it, I thought I could just roll through that little crevice in between there. Oh yeah, here's that sign that I was going to read the last time that I was here, but I got knocked down by him. It just kind of talks about him, yeah. If you can stop my wall rolling, you might get something hot rod or gold on. Uh, okay, so we took care of that already. Let's go down another level. Oh, we can't go down that way. We could just jump down. But we'll take the proper the proper way. Here. Now it's good that we've got this um, new stock of bombs because we're going to need a lot more bombs again for the next thing that we're going to do. Um, well first, actually just before I do that, we'll explore this area here. I talked about how this was a warp before, back to um, the Lost Woods. Um, but I didn't have the Goron's Bracelet at the time, so I'll show how this works here. We'll just uh, take out these boulders. Second half. <laughs> okay. So watch this. We just come through here. Oh, and look at that. Warps us right to the Lost Woods. Not bad, eh? And, as it happens, this boulder right here, we can bomb it now that we're here. Whoa! Secret hole! Not bad. Okay, well, again, we're still maxed out. But while we're here, I believe there's another hidden hole around here that's uh, a little bit better than that. Yields a little bit of a better reward. We want to come this way, and then this way, and then that way goes to the forest stage, so not there. We'll come up this way. Um, so there's a boulder here, but I think it's still not that one. I think we want to go this way. I think it's this boulder. All of these boulders do have hidden holes, but it's usually something not overly worth it, like just, yeah, another chest with, like, a blue rupee in it or something like that, or maybe a cow and you can get some, uh, some, uh, long, long milk. Okay, so we got business scrubs here, yeah, so this is what we want, so yeah, I am going to go back to the Deku shield here temporarily, just to bounce these guys back, and again, like last time, I'm gonna do my best to remember this time to uh, switch it back to the Hillian Shield before I decide to go back to the top of the mountain. To make your quest easier, I can enable you to pick up more Deku Nuts, but it'll cost you 40 rupees. Yes, yeah, so this is what we're here for, the second Deku Nut upgrade. Alright, and I can't remember what this guy does. Maybe just some potions or something like that? We're not going to buy anything from him, but just out of curiosity, I'll we'll try to remember. Alright, you win. Turn I will sell you Deku Seeds. Yeah, okay, so just more ammo. We're fine. Let's get out of here. All right. So, uh, how do we get back now? I think it's this way. Yeah, and then this way. And then this way. This way, and then the portal back should be on our right. Yeah, there we go. Back to Goron City we go. 
And now I want to go back down to the bottom level. And we're going to equip our Deku sticks. And there's that hidden one that that Goron put in there, remember? And uh, also, uh, before we do anything else here, uh, we can also get into this here, also previously not accessible. So we'll blow our way in here, and look at this, it's a Goron shop. Welcome. So talk to the owner. Thanks to you, we're all okay. Why don't you buy some bombs now? So. You can see bombs are clearly their specialty. <laughs> I got a lot of bombs for sale here, and then some recovery hearts also. Red potion, and this is something that we haven't seen before. That's interesting. Goron tunic. 200 rupees. A tunic made by Gorons. Adult size. Protects you from heat damage. So because it's adult size, we can't even wear it anyway. So that's kind of weird that they would put something like that in the game if we can't wear it. But um, And look at the price on that. 200 rupees. That's pretty steep. We would need a full wallet in order to... Uh, be able to afford that but uh anyway what we really want is to go back into Darunia's room and uh, I think he should be back here yeah let's talk to him here just for a second see what, what if anything he's got to say here hey brother play that tune again sometime soon <laughs> he really liked that Saria song oh yeah and there's another Deku stick there if uh, you missed the other one or you need more so the reason for this is that he's actually got lit torches in here. So that's why we want to come here with our Deku stick. Because then we can transfer the fire out to the unlit torches out here. And if we light them all up... I think there's four of them, yeah. Three, four... Whoa, that big multi-faced Goron vase starts rotating around like that. And the reason we want to do that is because now that it's doing that, it triggers sort of a little mini-game where if we come up to the top here and if we can manage to throw bombs into the top of the vase, we're rewarded. And the rewards get progressively better and better. Dang, that was... that would have gone into. I think I just took too long with the fuse. My aim was pretty good. There we go. Got in. So we get some rupees and a piece of heart. For some reason, I thought I had to do it three times before I got the piece of heart. Because I think that you can continue throwing more bombs in and getting more prizes. Maybe it's randomized or something then, because I, I seem to recall before having to do this multiple times before I finally got the piece of heart. Maybe I'm imagining that. Or I might be thinking of something else where you did have to do that. I thought you had to do this three times before you got it. I'm sure you must get more and more prizes, though, as you get it. They don't get better, though, but... Oh, okay, it's just bombs. Okay. I thought maybe, like, at first you just got, like, some rupees or something, and then after that maybe it's, like, more rupees and some ammo, and then finally the piece of heart. But, uh... Okay, apparently it's just that one time. Or it could have been that we just got lucky. At any rate, if you don't get it the first time, just keep doing it. <laughs> because that's what the ultimate reward is. Okay, um, I'm just trying to think here if there's anything else for us to do in Goron City while we're here. I don't think so, though. I think for the time being, we've explored basically everything. Okay, so, I'm gonna go back and re-equip our Ocarina, and I'm going to remember to re-equip the Hillian Shield. Remember this time. And we will now make our way up to the top of the mountain. That kills me. That rolling Goron spawns there every single time. <laughs> Alright. Come around this way. And here we can just drop a bomb here to blow up that boulder. But the boulder that's going to be on the other side, there's that. Uh, gap there, so we can't just drop a bomb there. We're going to have to time it and throw it just right. There we go. And look at that. It was hiding a red rupee. We're all maxed out again in our wallet again. But, uh, so now we can do this. And there's a hidden hole down here. 
Uh, we don't, you don't need to explore that, so we'll ignore it. But I think there's a cow down there, I think. And maybe a chest with rupees. Now I'm going to turn it back to daytime. Again, it's not really important, but I just like it being light out. There we go. And, uh, whoa! Look at this. Crap, crap, crap. So, some of them, some of these boulders falling down you can avoid, and some of them you can't. You can, like, tell where they're going to fall by looking at the shadows, but some of the shadows literally follow you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, you're going to take some damage, but... So, the best strategy there is to just keep rolling, so that way you can get through that area as quickly as possible. You can also see, then, why it was important not to have your Deku shield <laughs> equipped, because it probably would have burned there, too. But anyway, okay, we'll uh, take out manually these Skull Walchulas before we start climbing this wall here. And I think there's a third one up there too that we can't see from this vantage point. So first what we'll do is we'll just kind of make our way over here and drop down onto this little platform. And then look up again and see if we can see that third spider. Yeah, there it is. So we'll take it out before we again go up any further. And I think there might be... Um, gossip stone on this landing here maybe yeah there is again we're gonna we don't need to bother with gossip stones right now but that walchula did drop a heart for us oh look at that and there's our friend kepora gebora again um so we'll ignore i'm gonna ignore him first just for the time being but um, you'll see here there's two places here there's a bombable wall there and then there's this entrance here so if we go in here Watch the area this takes us into here. Death Mountain Crater. But, Jordan, it's so hot in here. We can't stay here for long. So look at that. It only gives us 32 seconds <laughs> before we've got to get the heck out of here. So I'm just going to come in here just to show you the area, show you the fact that that happens, and then also to uh, just break open that crate, grab that gold sculpture real quick. And then you can kind of see in this in this area here, we're like sort of in the in the maw of the volcano inside. But we can't stay. We got to get the heck out of here. Maybe if we were able to equip that Goron tunic, that would have helped us be able to uh, remain in here for longer. But we can't uh, we can't wear it as a child. So we'll come around here now, bomb this wall, and this is the secret entrance to where we will find the game's first great fairy. Great Fairy's Fountain. So these are always nice little areas. They're really pretty serene. And you'll see all it is is this altar that you can approach with this pool of water. And you'll notice that our feet is the Triforce symbol. We know what that means by now. That means whip out the ocarina and play good old Zelda's lullaby. And by doing that, we will summon the Great Fairy. And she will endow us with a gift of some sort. There are multiple great fairies and fairy fountains throughout Hyrule. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty freaky. <laughs> Gotta love that fake ass laugh. Welcome, Jordan. I'm the great fairy of power. I'm going to grant you a sword technique. Receive it now. <laughs> Being sarcastic, lady? Oh, yeah, that's neat, too. She always uh, restores all your health and everything every time you visit her, too. You mastered the secret sword technique of the spin attack. Hold B to charge your weapon. Release B to unleash a wave of energy with your spin. If you want to release energy without charging your weapon, just rotate the stick once and press B for a very effective quick spin. When you charge power for a spin attack, magic power will be consumed. Pay attention to your green magic meter. Hey boy, you're a messenger of the royal family, aren't you? Next time you're in their neighborhood, you should drop in on a friend of mine who lives by Hyrule Castle. She'll surely grant you another new power. <laughs> <What? laughs> come on, man. Don't be so half-hearted. When battle has made you weary, please come back to see me. Oh, I scared her off. 
Look at this. Whoa, green meter appearing under our hearts. Now we have magic power, finally. So basically, all this is is we've always been able to do a spin attack before. Hang on a second, Navi's interrupting me. I wonder if Saria knows anything about the other spiritual stone. All right, so that's a... Uh, prompt to play Saria's song, uh, because remember, um, that's the other thing Saria's song does in addition to making Darunia really happy. We can also communicate with her telepathically wherever we are. She may be able to help us with something. But first, let me just uh, finish what I was talking about there. Yeah, so the spin attack that we just got. Uh, we've always been able to do a spin attack, but now it's charged with magic power now that we've got this meter. Um, so, uh, uh, like she said, um, if we want, we can just do a quick spin attack, uh, like we've always been able to do. Just rotate the stick once and then press B. So if we do that... Now it looks like that. A little bit different. And you'll see also by doing that, not only is it a nice quick attack, but it actually doesn't consume magic power. But if you want a stronger attack, that will consume magic power. And there's actually two tiers of charges, charge strengths. So it really just matters how long you hold down the B button for to charge it. So the first tier will be like this. So we'll press B to slash, but then continue holding it down to charge the attack, right? There we go. And if we let go, it does that, and you'll see our meter depleted a little bit. Or we can hold it down for longer. And then it powers up to the second tier level. Look at that. And uh, But once it gets to the second tier, it's not like it charges even more than this. This is basically just for a visual effect. <laughs> but um, anyway, we release now. And it's like a... Whoa, it's like a fire attack now almost. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually have fire effects. That would have been cool if it was like an actual elemental attack. It's really just, again, an aesthetic thing. But it does look pretty cool. 